today I wanted to jump right in and, uh, and, and talk about, you know, the inevitability of resistance and why clearing blockages won't help you create what you love. Yeah, that's right, Georgie. You know, clearing blockages won't help you create what you love. That's a very big statement. And, and the reason why is, is that if you go on a archaeological search or, or try to clear all blockages in, you, in your life, you actually will, will be able to do it. However, consciousness is always learning. And, you know, what's interesting is that if there's a void, it needs to fill it with something. So if you go on a search to clear blockages, clear blockages, clear blockages, clear blockages, you will. But there's a void. And so the only thing that will be left is this idea or instruction that you must find blockages to clear. And so what happens is as soon as you clear enough of them, the brain is looking for more and inevitably as it looks for more, guess what it finds? More blockages, more things to solve, more problems. And so you can be a master at clearing blockages and not have a life you love. You can clear all your blockages, find more, then find more in other people and then not have any left. So you create a health problem that you need to deal with. Does that make sense, everyone? So so this idea that 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 has been um, shared out there of clearing blockages is um, is a half truth. It's a half truth. And half truths are actually um, fully wrong. See, a, a half truth is quite dangerous. Does that make sense? Like half half truth, because because it, it is truthful. It is good to not have blockages, right? If you want to go create what you what you like, yeah. Beatrice Beatrice has, has beat me to it. A half truth is a full lie, because the 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 challenge is is that you can spend a lifetime clearing blockages. And you just keep finding more and finding more and finding more. And so a half truth is a full lie. Uh, there, there, there is a lot of truth in the idea that if you've got blockages, you do need to shift them and let them go. That is a that is very truthful, very useful. However, however, you must do something else, which is step into a creative reality. Once you step into a creative reality, which is very simple, it's not, it's not very difficult. Uh, a creative reality is this is what I want to create. There's only three aspects to a creative reality. One, what is it I want to create? Two, where am I now? And three, what is the action that I must take? Those are the only three things that, that lock you into a creative reality. When you're creating, you are going to face resistance. Okay, resistance uh, means to stand against, to resist, to, to put a stand against something. And resistance is inevitable. It's just inevitable. Whenever we're creating something that is different to what we've always had, there will be resistance. And we just got to get over the fact that there will be resistance. Does that make sense? Like it, there will be resistance. And the reason why there will be resistance is you have this really amazing part of your system that here, we, here at Conscious Education, we call the unconscious. And this amazing part of your system is designed for you to never change. It is designed to stay the same. It is designed to figure out what it can survive and repeat that. So every time you go for something new, you feel resistance to it. This isn't abnormal. It's never going to stop. And it's not bad. Can I get some feedback in the chat box? How does that sit with you? It's not bad. Hmm. It's not bad. See, for me, in so many circles, you know, fear or resistance or worry or quote negative thoughts, you know, they're the villain out there. Hey, they're the villain. 
we get told they're the villain. There's this, you know, big scary thing that's stopping us. The truth is, is that it's very important uh, that you have you have an unconscious that doesn't want to change. It's very important. So, so this part of you is there to say, hey, we don't know if going and having that is survivable. So we're going to throw up these uncomfortable feelings. We don't know. We think that might lose, you know, one of the one of the unconscious rights. We feel we might lose safety. We feel we might lose belonging. We feel we might lose something. So we're going to stop you, which is a very good thing, very useful. The unconscious doesn't want to just go test new things right it, it, the basis example is if you've already learned that uh you know a, a piece of uh metal uh flying at 100 miles an hour is is not good to stand in front of you don't need to go test if, if today maybe that's changed right you've already learned it right and so resistance is inevitable and i just want you to sit with that it's inevitable you it's it's okay that's it's there see Many times there are there are there are teachers out there who who lead you to a false assumption that there's a place you'll get to where there won't be resistance. That you won't feel resistance to what, what it is you're creating, that that you'll magically be able to finally clear enough blocks that uh you know you'll just be this the you you, you know you, you just will always be able to feel good magically go for what you want but the truth is is that yes you will feel good and magically go for what you want because you've got over the fact that resistance is not a bad thing does that make sense did i did i explain that well like you you become magical because you're not so you're not fighting this resistance you've realized yeah resistance part of it i know what's happening here i'm 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 above this i'm i'm you know i'm meta i'm the observer i know this is my unconscious doing what it's supposed to do awesome great hey super conscious can we treat that so i can get on with it you see i'm not i'm not worried about the resistance i'm not you know, I'm not upset about it. So I'm not angry at it. I'm, I'm just observing and I'm just noticing. It. This is really important, you know, that you that you do understand the truth. See, the truth about resistance is that it's actually just outdated information. You know, at some point it was useful information. Resistance is just outdated information, you know, just because you go to make a sales call and you feel worried doesn't mean the resistance is bad. It, it might mean that at some time in your life, you weren't able to handle rejection. You just weren't able to handle it. So you set up a structure where you would avoid being rejected, right? You, it, it's just outdated. You can handle it now. You know, you're not a seven-year-old or six-year-old that, that, you know, will crumble under. You're not that anymore. Does that make sense? And that, that, that's something to really understand. It's outdated information. When we bump into resistance, we don't usually experience it, experience it as pleasant. You know, we might have inner conflict, self-sabotage, and, and, and we have this feeling that something is holding us back. So remember the word means to stand against. There's like a, a force uh, working against us. And what, what we must do is to truly know that this is going to be part of it and 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 when you are creating is to use our five steps here use these tools to go wow awesome this is what i choose this is i know i feel this way and i want to let these things go so that you know just like carving a statue out of uh out of rock or sculpting it you know you let go of what you don't need anymore you know, and that, that's that's how it works. And so there's nothing wrong with the resistance. In fact, our resistance is created by us for us. It's a creation. And it's important to understand that these instructions, this resistance was actually created by you and your superconscious at some point. 
Resistance isn't some outside force that is just turned up out of nowhere. Just because you create, you don't remember when the resistance was created, you were unconscious to it, you know, doesn't mean that you didn't create it. Just like you probably don't remember when you first learned to speak. You probably don't remember when you first learned to walk. Because in the ages of, you know, zero to four, we are so unconscious. You know, self-conscious doesn't really come online to seven years old. So, so we are unconscious. So, so we don't remember creating it because we're living unconsciously. And, and a lot of times, the, these codes or these ideas were completely wrong. You know, can I just get some feedback? Who's done some work in Magnetic Minds where we've found a moment and you go, wow, that was just a three-year-old's idea and I'm still living it today and it doesn't make any sense at all. That's not the truth. You know, I had a, a mother who was 21 and, and a father who was 24 and they were doing the best they can. And, and you know, and here I am thinking it was all about me. You know, and we go, and so you know, we, we make this decision to to shut down and be quiet, but it had nothing to do with reality, right? And so on 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 this with this premise, I want you to get that resistance is just part of the game. You know, a lot of a lot of people say to me, Oh, Chris, can we go get this work and you know go go help children with it? I'm like, well, you know, probably, but but also let the kid be a kid. And and what I've noticed is is that we need to fall from grace and 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 have a human experience and and make up ideas about how the world is and then we get to reevaluate them through our own adult mind because we're not broken we created them we've created these codes and this is very important and so if you can can i just get a yes if you really believe that you know it, that you created a lot of the resistance and for good reasons you know, like, does, does it seem to seem to follow along like a, you know, a, a reasonable assumption? Because it's a premise, right? It's a premise. See, if you truly assume the premise that it is your consciousness that is creating resistance and creating these beliefs, you truly sit in that assumption. Well, then you must be able to realize that if you created it, you the one that can change it. True? If you assume you're the super conscious that created all this resistance for reasons that you might have forgotten, then you must also assume that you can change it, which is what we see in this work every single day. So it's very important that you don't see your resistance as bad. Because if you, if you see your resistance as bad, you're basically teaching your unconscious that it's, it's not doing the job it's supposed to be doing. You see, and, and you're not really uh, acknowledging that you're super conscious. You're actually just sitting in a place where you're, you're feeling quite powerless uh, to your your own creations, which is not a good, uh, not not a useful uh, way to teach your consciousness. This this point of acknowledgement is very important. It's very important that you acknowledge that if you fight and wrestle with uh, with uh, resistance, you, you're really you're really just going to create more fight. So. Uh, I want us all to do a little exercise before recode. So a little exercise here, and uh, I want you all to to find something that you you resist experiencing, like really really resist experiencing. So just type in the chat box something you you know you just choose to to not want to experience. So for me, uh, I really don't like to experience um, boredom. I really don't like to experience. Um, uh you know not having a purpose right these so so what are some things that you know that you don't like to experience yeah what, what would you resist uh experiencing you know like you know losing all your money being broke failure what would you resist being overwhelmed having a job like really resist what would you resist yeah Okay. Awesome. Just let, let everyone write. And this, these are all good answers. 
resist means to take a stand against okay so what do you what, what would you resist so we've all put a lot of things down that we resist in out for ourselves but what about in the world you know we resist uh you know what do we resist out there you know that people get taken advantage of uh, people lie public embarrassment right yeah climate change yeah homelessness yeah so just you know there's lots of lots of resist yeah theft yeah unfairness so uh whether you've picked one or you're just uh going to plagiarize from what i've said or someone else in there it doesn't matter so just just pick something that you you happy to resist okay it doesn't matter uh it really doesn't matter okay so what I'd like you to do, if you've if you if you've got a notebook, is just write that you know thing down, or you can just do it in your mind. Like I resist um, being broken, misunderstood, or I resist struggling, I resist heartbreak. Just just pick one for me, okay? You know, just one. It's just a fun exercise, just so you know. Cool. So resist doing something hard, resist failing, right? Just just write that down. Okay, cool. And so what I'd like you to do is, is that that's the thing that you resist. I want you right now, so don't don't type in the chat box, I want you to actively resist that thing, like in your body, resist that thing being true, like resist it, like get, get yourself into a state where you really, you know, you don't want that to happen, really resist it, like, you know, just like, Get annoyed that that even is a thing that could exist, you know, really, you know, deny its being like, you know, just truly deny that that thing could even exist, like truly resist it, that, you know, re resist it with everything, like put your abdominals into it, resist the heck out of it, make sure you use your glutes, like absolutely use your whole body to bloody resist it, like resist that thing. Come back to me uh, when the when the when you finish resisting it and notice notice how it happened. Notice what happened. So tell me, tell me what happened. What happened? Did did uh, did did the thing change? And so as you were resisting it, how did, where was your focus? So did you notice that as you were getting so annoyed at this thing that exists, whether it was you being broke or you know, um, overweight or, uh, or, uh, you know, not enough sales or feeling unhappy, whatever it was, did you notice that that all you could do was think about that thing? So we'll try something else here. Okay, I just want you to pick something up um, off your off your desk. So I'll pick up this, uh, you know, even if it's your phone or whatever, I'm going to pick up this pen here. All right, just just grab just grab something off your desk. Okay, whatever it is, a pen, a, you know, maybe you have a, a you know like a keyboard or I don't know, a, you know, sit. Maybe you have have your keys or something. You know, just uh, just just uh, pick pick something up, even if it's just your phone. Right, just pick pick it up. And as you pick whatever this thing is up, I just want you to really outline what it is. So just take your eyes and go around the outside of it, you know, really just noticing what it is, okay? And, and I want you to now just really deny this thing's existence. Like look at it and deny it, you know? Resist that it even exists. Like really allow yourself to use your whole body to deny that it exists resist its existence use your abdominals and keep resisting it with your, your whole body until either it evaporates or you give up okay 
you give up yet? Now, when you're doing uh, resistance, doesn't it feel like you've taken some sort of action? Like it feels like progress, doesn't it? As you're resisting either this object or this thing in life. Can I just get some feedback? Doesn't it feel like you've made some progress? Right? You should all give up, by the way. Uh, you know, it's not going to evaporate. Doesn't it feel like a little bit of progress? Like a part of you just feels like you made some progress. See, we all have this idea that getting angry at what we don't want to experience is better than not getting angry at it. Getting pissed off or getting worried about it, we feel like that's actually useful. We feel like that's useful. You know, I don't want this. We feel like that's useful. We feel like this is a... This is an idea that there's something there and we don't want it. We feel like that's a useful action. But did anyone notice that in the two examples that nothing changed? Nothing changed except you just got in your eyesight the one thing you don't want. Nothing really changed. When the pandemic was on and, and everyone was so focused on what they didn't want, they were so annoyed. They got so, they, oh, this, this is bad. And they got so, but it didn't stop that that's what was there. They got annoyed at this person doing that and that person doing this. And, you know, everyone was, and it was, we, we showed just how much we're focused on it. Everyone got caught. Everyone got caught in, the, in it. Well, let's not say everyone, but majority. So this is a very good example for what most of us uh, do when we, we, quote, are trying to create our life. We get so focused on what it is that we need to fix. Last week on the Inner Circle, had a great conversation with an amazing coach. So focused on what she needs to change about her money mindset. Oh, God, I just need to, there's just this little bit I need to sort out about my money mindset. So focus on that rather than just going out there and creating the money. Josephine, you're the only one. The, the pen didn't disappear. Go have a look. I promise you the pen is still there. <laughs> Even if you felt that it disappeared, I... I I'll, I'll bet $1,000 the pen's still there. And, and so does everyone see this conditioning that we get ourselves into? So when you go back to what you wrote down, okay, so you wrote down whatever it was. What did we all write down before? We wrote down like, you know, um, you know poverty or sickness, like the thing that we resist, right? And, and we know that just like with the pen or whatever, what was on your, your, your desk, uh, when you focus on it, it didn't change. Right? We know that. So whatever you wrote down before, I just want you to cross it out and then write down what you would like. I want you just to cross it out and just notice what you would like. So instead of injustice, you would like justice. Instead of betrayal, you would like trust. Instead of, uh, you know, instead of this, wouldn't you want this? So just write down what you would like it, would like. And just write down how you would like it. So, you know, I, I, I resist this. What I would like is this. What I would like is this. Oh, hey, Corrine, glad you're here. So what I would like is this, what I would like, and just, and just write down what you would like. So cross out what you don't want and then write down what you would like. Beautiful. And so once you've written down what you would like, go ahead and focus 100% on what you would like. Really step into it, experience it, you know, notice what life would be like if you had it. 
See it as it complete. Find a time in the future where you're living that moment. What would you think about? What would you be? Breathe into it. Like find a moment and breathe into it. Become it. Become it. Become that. The thing that you'd like it to be. Notice how it is and experience it. Find one or two moments in the future, the, the very recent future, that you will experience when it's done. Completely focus on it. Step into it with your whole body. Really, with your whole body, feel it. Find times when you're doing that. How would your smile be? How would you breathe? What would you be saying to yourself? What would Who would be there? Really go into it exactly as you would like it, just as you would like it fully. Be there, immersed. How would life feel like? What would you do in the mornings? What would you do in the afternoon? If life was like this, if this was how it is, what would it be like? Go there fully, 100% just there and pick many different experiences of you being this, you know, just notice what clothes would you wear? Go into it. 100%, what would it be like? Create that in your mind, step into it, see it and be it. And as you do it, just notice that experience fully. And when you're ready, come back, fill me in. Fill me in, how's that? When you're fully in that, when you're fully in that which you want, was there any worry about what you don't want? Was there any way that what you don't want existed? Did you think about it at all? So as you go into the creation, you create, and as you create what you want, that which you do not want will not exist anymore. It, but if you resist what you don't want, that which you resist must always stay alive. So you go into it. And this is step one of our five steps. Step one is you go fully into it, 100%. You build it in your mind. Step two is you notice what you don't want. We don't spiritually bypass it. We don't ignore it. What we know is what we don't want is just the starting point of the journey to what we do want. We go into how we want it to be, how it's going to be, then we come back to the now. So when we look at, you know, the pandemic or someone that's uh, when it was all wrong, we look at how we want it to be. Then we go, well, right now, this is the reality. Right now, this is where I am. I want this body. It's going to be like this. And right now I'm here. And that is the creative structure. And so do you see the, the how trivial it is to focus on, on what we don't want and talk about it and moan about it? All we do is keep it alive and give it energy. But all of us, have been trained that we must talk about what we don't want. We must be annoyed about what we don't want. We must get uh, frustrated at what we don't want because that's how we're going to shift it. We feel like we're going to beat it. We're going to smack it into smithereens. We feel like that's useful. Is it true? Can I get a true? If, if like, you know, unconsciously, we've all been taught, you know, from our parents and their parents and society that, that you, you must get annoyed at what you don't want. And it's, it's, just, it's, it's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. It doesn't matter how annoyed you get at it. Oh, someone typed in, but Chris, can't you just get annoyed at this enough that like a shale and monk, you can, you know, turn it into, uh, into flames? Yeah, well, actually what you do is it doesn't exist because you're so busy focusing on what you do want that like it bursts into flames. You, you create this. Make sense? And so we must allow ourselves to be in the creative structure. We must allow ourselves to step into the creative structure and then trust that as we step into the creative structure, if we continually take the correct action, then 
what it is that we want to see manifest will manifest. I mean, this is our birthright to be creators, to, to turn thoughts into things. Most of us just keep turning the same thought into the same stuck thing. We, most of us, use this unbelievable, powerful gift we've all been given to just go round in circles. Having the same problem that, you know, we were given, uh, that our parents have experienced and, and just, just go around circles. Most are not courageous enough to recreate themselves and go have life as they want it. Love it, Dalton. This is what the creative structure is all about. You create the end result that you would love to see, not by fixing your current reality, but by allowing yourself to acknowledge that it's there, that it's true, that it exists, and evolving it into what you do want. When your system truly acknowledges what I've covered in this 30 minute sermonette, when you fully acknowledge this, your life will be magic. Absolutely magic. It's so important. Your unconscious will take all suggestion and just say yes. It just says yes. And if you tell it, this is what it is we want to create. This is what it is we want to create. It is going to come up with beautiful information on how to do it. It, it is. And that, that's the strongest message that you can send to your unconscious is that you can figure it out, that you can do it, you know. And so this is what we mean by the correct orientation, because you focus all of your being on what it is that you want to have created, your future focus, action orientated, maniac on a mission, going for what you love with your heart on fire, just choosing to create this world the way you choose it to be. You're acknowledging there's all sorts of things that are not how we want it to be, which is why we're so focused on creating it this way. See, and, and this is the correct orientation. As long as you're stuck in this whole idea, that is wrong, this is wrong, this is it. You're in the complaining reality. Write this down. Don't complain, create. That should be on a T-shirt. Don't complain, create. There's no point in complaining. It is what it is. It's here. Go create how you want it to be. And, and, and if you understand that this creative tension, your the, the, the void that's created between this is what I want to create and this is where I am now, your consciousness hates a void. So it's going to fill it and it's, and it's going to take you to where you want. And, and uh, as soon as you step into your truth and understand just how powerful you are, magic is going to happen. Hey, magic is going to happen.